tell you about my private life. Um, I've had some good news recently is that I've got... Um, my wife has always had a dream, okay, to own a little place in the countryside. And it became my dream when she told me about it every day for 10 years. <laughs> and recently, I bought a little place in the countryside for us, beautiful little place. It's very remote, very isolated, very private, rolling hills. It's, it's surrounded by a farm. It's not our farm, but it's just lovely. We didn't tell the children we were getting it. It was the most magical day when we first moved in, and we were standing outside, all of us, my children running around in the fields. They couldn't believe it, giggling, and the sun going down, and my wife and I holding hands, going, we did it. It's amazing. I'm so happy. In tears. It was beautiful. And lovely little animals, little birds, because you don't see lice birds in London, you know. In London we have pigeons, sort of suicidal pigeons. <laughs> sort of come in front of the car, just look at you, kill me, end my life, it's not worth it. <laughs> and they just smile for the last second, I don't even have the guts to end it! <laughs> there can't be all these multicoloured birds coming out of the woods, like they were welcoming us to the country, making lovely noises. Like they were saying, hello, welcome, thank you, thank you for coming. Holding hands, children running around, lovely. Then the sun went down completely. Absolute total darkness. Pitch black, terrified. We all both looked at where we thought we were. We were. Darling, are you there? I can't even see you. We should go to London. We can't do this, can we? We can't do this. Where are the children? Children! And it was like all those lovely daytime animals were instantly replaced by the night shift animals. <laughs> Noises from birds I've never heard before. Sinister sounds. I actually googled what bird sounds like a child screaming in the woods. Seriously. <laughs> there was just this... My whole family holding hands in a 360, edging to where we hoped the house was. the neighbour's field. And foxes. In London, when you see a fox, you see it for a second, and you just go, oh, look, there's a fox, and then it disappears, like into thin air. In the country, you hear the noises they make. They make this vile sort of... Like, they're vomiting violently. <laughs> there was this fox just walking towards us. That with the... Cats on heat. Is there a more sinister sound out there than a cat ah, sort of whining? Ah, ah, ah. If only women were like this, how much easier would my teenage years have been? <laughs> have you met Beverly? Ah. I think Beverly's up for it. I think you're right, Dave. Leave me to it. made it into the house. You know, people in the country, they say things like, we never lock our doors in the country. Are you joking? I was putting furniture in front of the door. <laughs> I opened the curtains to see what it was like. There was a fox in my face. <laughs> oh, my God, it's getting worse! Because <laughs> the fear is someone's going to break in in the night. What are you going to do if someone breaks in in the countryside? In London, you tell them where you live, you tell them your, your road, your postcode, the number, then the police will come to your house. In the country, people say things like, ignore the postcode, that takes you to another house. <laughs> or, why don't you swap postcodes with that house? <laughs> Every house just has names. The Glebe House, the Rectory, the Little Cottage on the Hill. <laughs> I've just spent my whole life giving people directions. There's a dip, there's a dip in the road. You'll, you'll feel it, you, you won't see it, you'll feel a slight dip. <laughs> there's some roadkill, it used to be there. There might be some roadkill, there's a left, there's a sharp left. You think you're driving into a hedge. You've got to trust it's there, you've got to trust it's there. <laughs> then you'll be on a lane for about a mile, then you'll come to a huge oak tree. Then you know you've gone too far. You must turn back and go back there. Oh, for God's sake! You can't be saying this to the police on the phone. You might as well pass it on to the burglar. How did you find the place? Can I put you on? Do you mind? <laughs> because the onus is on us as men. This is what my wife does. Every time there's a noise in the house, she wakes me up in bed. She's like, oh, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Coming from the kitchen, did you hear that noise? And I always deny it, even though I, I've heard it because I'm awake, terrified. No, no, it must be the wind, even though I know there's no wind in the kitchen. 
She always says the same thing. Go and see. Go on, go downstairs and see. I'm always like, well, that wasn't exactly the way I was going to handle this situation. I was hoping we would hide as a family <laughs> and await rescue. But, Michael, you're the man of the house. Yes, you're right, I am the man of the house, but what concerns me at this very moment is I think there's another man in the house. <laughs> and I've decided to make him the man of the house on this occasion. <laughs> but what about the children? Good idea, send one of them, send the older one, the nine-year-old. <laughs> 